the fall of 2018, we celebrate or remember or think back, reflect on the 10-year anniversary of the financial crisis, fall of 2008, period of time that utterly changed the world, changed my career, changed how I think about my career, my profession, changed how I think so many individual investors think about their financial security. It, it really did, in a lot of ways, serve as a sort of economic 9-11 of our generation. I don't make uh, analogies to 9-11 easily. Uh, it's not, it, 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 I get where there's a heavy distinction because of the loss of life and, and terrorist aggression that's involved with 9-11, but I do think as far as just newsworthiness and impact into the culture, that it does carry that same sort of stigma that a 9-11 event carried. And the financial crisis that we consider to be of fall 2008 led to this great recession that um, in a lot of ways we're still coming out from under now. Uh, we're, we're dealing right now with the Federal Reserve that is unwinding a lot of the monetary accommodation that they put on to get us through that period 10 years ago. And yet now markets and, and economies have uh, volatility associated with them because of the unwind of this uh, uh, interest rate environment and, and the heavy um, balance sheet expansion that the Federal Reserve did. And that was all out of the financial crisis so many years ago. So this this is... Uh, something that's truly stuck with us. And I think back to the fall of 2008, and I specifically remember September 6th, the date in which the Treasury Department put Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac into receivership. And essentially, the, uh, the Treasury Department formalized to the fact that the Treasury Department was now on the hook for Fannie and Freddie. And they were going to receive their profits if there were ever were to be any, but they were going to have to back their debt. And in order to do that, they wiped the equity out. And although we didn't know this right away, they ended up wiping the preferred equity out as well. And, and that had a profound effect as to uh, the way people viewed the security of other instruments they may have owned, even if they didn't own them directly, but if they owned money market funds. They had to kind of wonder what was in these money market funds. And, and it created an environment that you could call a sort of run on the bank. Even though it wasn't like the, the famous Jimmy Stewart movie in the 1930s, it was actually exactly like that economically, albeit an institutional run on the bank and a run on investment banks versus your neighborhood mom and pop, you know, community bank. Um, but there's no question that the events of Fannie and Freddie represent a very symbolic moment. Not only were the events I'm going to talk about in a little bit a uh, kind of direct byproduct of so many of those things, but um, what led to Fannie and Freddie's demise was at the heart of the entire financial crisis itself, and that was an overextension. An overextension is by far the nicest, uh, most sterilized word I could use to describe what I'm getting at. Uh, overextension of credit in in America, the leveraged assets, specifically in the in the realm of real estate and mortgage debt, uh, and and it got insane, and it got insane even for government sponsored enterprises like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that decided to chase the subprime market in an effort to to keep up with the profits that they saw other investment banks making in that in that sector, but see they did so with a highly distorted cost of capital because of the implicit government guarantee. That implicit government guarantee was the, was the source of so many problems. It allowed investors to believe that they were buying something that had a government good housekeeping stamp of approval on it. And when uh, everything happened, the fact of the matter was there was a lot of uncertainty and the only way for the Treasury Department, led by, at the time, Secretary Hank Paulson in the very end of the Bush administration, to kind of put this stuff to bed was basically for them to formally take over Fannie and Freddie. And there, there we are. 
um, that that were represented a just paradigm shift. It was over the weekend. It was a Saturday in early September 2008, and I had been away for an anniversary weekend with, with my wife, and and I remember driving home and and realizing that something was going on, and, and I did not realize. Uh, it would take another week. I'm going to get there in a moment, uh, but I did not realize, even at the time, exactly how much things were about to change. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll take up some of those future events in our, in our next segment, but the, the moment of Fanny and Freddie going down helped to start, uh, what would become a month of complete and total insanity.